Hello everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another very exciting episode of CSK News. A lot has happened this weekend. Hope you guys all enjoyed your long weekends and please remember to leave a comment down below what your favorite story today is. And also please reply to this first story because the first one I want to talk about, let's hop right into the news guys. The biggest story this past weekend reported by ESPN. I'll link that article down below guys. We have new investors in the North American scene yet again to Team NRG. Now in the past year about, we've seen so many investors, celebrity, pro, pro players out there for what they call real sports have come into the esports scene as they've seen it as a viable investment for the future and obviously a, a source of return of their income sometime down the line as well. We've seen countless names, a notable one being Shaquille O'Neal, obviously being invested in a team NRG. He became one of their board members. And we now have a new deal reported by ESPN, guys, a $15 million investment deal, including some a long list of names, all to team NRG. And they've actually acquired a long list of celebrities and pro players. I'll show you guys on screen over 10 plus people now. And this recent deal also includes members like Alex Rodriguez. He's actually expanded his investment, made his investment even larger. And we also have newcomers like JLo, obviously a very, very popular female actress out there, actress, dancer, singer, whatever you want to call it. JLo's also now been invested. Marshawn Lynch, obviously in the NFL for another year or however long he wants to stay there. Also Michael Strahan, a very well-known personality out there. And on top of that, a long list of others have now all come together to actually be part of this $15 million deal into Team NRG. Now why I'm talking about this and why I want you guys' feedback about this is I still have no idea why people come to NRG to actually invest their money. Now obviously in the North American scene, we have so many more names out there that are far more popular social media wise and even just esports generally wise uh, in terms of prize pool winnings than Team NRG. Obviously we have Cloud9, even the TSM without a CSGO team. We could go Optic Gaming or other teams out there as well. Liquid even being one of them that is far and above that of NRG. But NRG is one of the few NA organizations who actually opens themselves up for investors. These other, and it really kind of leads you, leads you actually to think, why are they doing this? You know, why are other organizations not doing this? Because they don't need it. Obviously with fan bases like Cloud9 and Optics, they obviously have a large sponsorship base as well. They don't need to actually open up for investments. And so it leaves open open space for all these tinier teams out there to actually have a source of income when they allow people to actually buy ownership or whatever these celebrities are buying into. They actually get their board spots. They get obviously some control over NRG. But it makes you curious as to why other North American organizations are not exactly doing this. But on top of that, I really want to kind of pick your guys' brain. What do you think about this? I really cannot see a future return down the line. Obviously, esports being a viable source of income maybe sometime way in the future. But I feel like all these people who are being invested have so much money. They really have no idea what to do with it. They hear the word esport and they, they see that their friend is also invested in a team. They go, yeah, let's throw $500,000 towards that way. Maybe I'll have my return of income. Maybe I won't. But I really can't see why you would ever want to invest a you know, million dollar investment into a team like NRG when they really, when you think about all their teams, when you think about all the esports they're, they're involved in, it's a nice spread of teams. But really, are they really making that much money back from it? You have Super Smash Bros teams, Hearthstone teams. Those are esports that really aren't going to pay off too much. And in, in the end, their CSGO team is an average North American organization. They have a Call of Duty roster, but really the main picking point here is because obviously they will have an Overwatch League spot and they needed investors to actually buy that spot itself. And so that seems to be the major draw here. Now, again, as a celebrity, I could not see a possible return anytime soon for this big investment. But yes, that's one of the main reasons these guys have actually chosen Team NRG is for that Overwatch League spot, obviously around a $15 million buyout to attain that spot. And they will be one of those teams out there, organizations with an Overwatch team in the Overwatch League. And so that seems to be the major draw of this. Of course, it's also involved in CSGO, but I want to know what you guys think about this. I know it's more of an esports news topic, but I really can't see why you would ever actually recommend someone to invest into a team like NRG. It just, it baffles my mind. They've, they've actually acquired so much money from investors. But anyway, back to more focus on CSGO news. We also had a breaking story a couple days ago. I actually had inside source about this, but I couldn't get the video out long enough. So I'm actually going to, of course, cover it right now, guys. We do have Tyloo picking up a brand new player on a two month loan, and that will be HR Bondic. Now people thinking, first off, how are these guys going to speak to one another? I'm going to play you guys a quick clip here because this is actually back in July when Ty Lue first acquired Peacemaker as their coach. If you guys do not remember, yes, the Brazilian coach is now, of course, the coach of the Chinese roster, Ty Lue. And so I want to tell you guys right now, we're not really sure what language these guys are going to be speaking, most likely English. But as of a few months ago, these Chinese players were not speaking English. And here's how they were communicating. So how does even the communication work? Because obviously, from what I know, that the Chinese players don't really speak English uh, very much. So does it go through uh, like a translator through Marshall, for example? Yeah, yeah, it goes through a translator. Um, um, BNT, BNT, he speaks English. Um, he's not fluent, but uh, we can talk to each other. Uh, somebody also speaks a little bit, uh, but mainly it's Marshall. Like Marshall is not only the manager, but he's the translator. So, for example, when we're going over anything or when I have to adapt anything mid-game or when, if I have 
to do preparations or anything. He has to be there 100 percent of the time, translating everything and making sure that everybody understands. Uh, and just so you guys know, that was Peacemaker talking about the Tai Lu roster. Obviously, many of them not speaking full Chinese, uh, full English. That is, and maybe in a course of a few months, they've actually spoken more English than they usually do. But even then, there's going to be a communication barrier there. And ever since then, as well, the, the person they referred to as Marshall as their communications expert, as their translator, he's actually left the organization back in August. So this going to be further problems for Tai Lu. I really can't see where this pick is going to go. But as of right now, we'll be bonding from HR on loan for about two months for that roster for the next couple of events for Tai Lu. We'll see how they do. And as of right now, HZ is actually back in China and away from the team itself. So best of luck to Tai Lu. A big change here and a big kind of weird change as well. On top of that, if you guys wanted to know, we actually had inside sources uh, leaked a couple days ahead of time. It was actually a Tai Lu practice against the Ukraine team. Many of you guys know. Uh, I think it was actually Navi they were practicing against. And you guys can see on the, on the screen right now, it was 1993 was a random player on the Tai Lu side. If you go to, of course, Bonnick Steam profile, he was actually named 1993. And then to begin to give it you guys even further, we actually go to his Twitch stream. It links back to his profile, which was 1993. So that's how we knew ahead of time it was actually Bondic. But speaking of the Ukrainian players, guys, we actually had a conflict of interest yet again. We had thank you, thank you to Kay. He actually pointed this out. And this kind of has been created in the past. Many of us know about ES Force, the company that obviously owns Virtus Pro and SK Gaming. Both those teams have played against each other many of times. And it actually creates a conflict of interest. We've talked about this in the past, but there have been no repercussions for that. Apparently, they're going to allow people out there to actually own or have partial ownership in several teams out there. And now Zeus becomes one of the few people with that problem as we have the WESG qualifiers. If you guys do not know, WESG is going to be a great event. All the teams in that event have to be of the same nationality. And we actually had Zeus on the Ukraine lineup looking at like a very strong lineup. They actually went up against his own team, Pro 100, if you guys remember. Uh, I think it was several, several months ago, he actually started his own roster. He is actually the president of that foundation and obviously went through the process of hiring all those players. And they faced off against one another for the WESG qualifiers. Now, again, first off, thanks to Decay for pointing this out. Actually, Decay went back and forth with Zeus because Decay had that tweet about it, obviously alleging that he could have, if he wanted to, maybe convinced his teammates to actually throw the match to Pro 100. Obviously, they did not. They actually beat Pro 100. They sweep them 2-0 in dominant fashion. But again, it does again bring up the point that there is a conflict of interest. Should this be allowed to happen in the first place, or should there some, be some arrangement or some rearrangement where these teams should not be allowed to play each other at all? What do you guys think about that? Obviously, they did not throw the match on purpose, and they probably wouldn't anyway, but it does create that conflict in the future if we do have this instance happen in a more important situation. Obviously, a slim chance of that happening, but what do you guys think about that? And very last in today's episode of CSGO News, I do want to talk about very briefly CSGO Boss, who did tweet out these a couple days ago, and it has been confirmed, yes, their previous owners, one of them being Jake, did actually scam the community. So first off, I remember tweeting about this, and some guy was like, oh, you're accusing these guys of scamming, and you don't even know for sure. What are you doing warning people? So I'm glad I warned some people that, yes, CSGO Boss, for a long time, was scamming people on their website. What their owner, Jake, was actually doing was he was using a bot account, going on the website, coin flip setting, and he was actually winning several, several coin flips, even the, even the smaller ones. He was actually targeting just about anyone he could, and he was trying not to get caught by targeting smaller coin flips out there, which is probably the ma mass majority of people who actually use their website. You know, you go to a gambling website, you spend a couple bucks, and you expect to win a few bucks back, and maybe quit after you win a few bucks as well. And yes, he was actually scamming many, many people. So who knows what's going to happen with that website, guys. Quagger has not responded to me. He's another partial owner. And now MoTV has also stepped down from ownership as well. So who knows what's going to happen with CSGO Boss. I still wouldn't advise you guys to use it. The management over there is pretty much broken up. And uh, thanks to you guys for being very aware of that. And so please be careful in the future we're using that website as well. Hope you guys all enjoyed today's episode of CSGO News. I do apologize. I've been really, really busy. This is actually midterm week and so is next week. So I'm not really sure if I can expect too many videos out this week because I'm, I'm in some very tough classes and I'm really, really struggling. So thank you guys all for watching. Hope you guys all enjoyed. And I'm very happy to announce I will have a new sponsor hopefully next video as well. And so it uh, should be a good time. So hope you guys all enjoyed. I will see you all next time. Remember, I like you. Bye. Noise, but not enough. Oh, are you?